Hello everyone, Torx here. We're going to be doing a keyboard review on the Logitech G110. Um, this retails or retailed at $79.99. Not quite sure if they're still making it anymore, um, but you can still find them new currently as of April 2014. You, you can still shop around and find them new at certain sites for like 60 or 50 bucks, but I'm not sure if they're still making it. Logitech's always doing like remodels and such, but if you find the remodel of this keyboard, whatever they call it, it's probably very similar, but if you get the G110, it's an outstanding keyboard to get. I've had this for maybe like three or four years or so, I think three years, and it's an amazing keyboard, both for gaming and casual use. Not the perfect gaming keyboard, simply because it's not mechanical. It's just a regular old rubber dome keyboard. It's not a clicky, good mechanical keyboard, but other than that, with that in mind, it's an outstanding keyboard. I really like it. And, of course, the one upside is it's less noisy when you hit the keys, I suppose, but a lot of people don't care about that. Anyway, um, let me give you the little details on what this keyboard can do, what makes it so special. Um, well, first off, it has little backlit LEDs. I'm not sure if you can see that too well, but you can see the keys light up and you can change the colors. It goes from blue to red, and in your little options menu in the um, software Logitech gives you that you can download, or with the CD or whatever, when you get this keyboard, you can set what you want the colors to be. It only goes from blue to red, the hues. So you can choose any color in between those, and you can make it less bright, less saturated and such in the computer. But I have it set to just straight up blue, and then sort of a pink, purple, I guess, and then a kind of magenta red. But yeah, it's it's not one of those crazy ones where you set a green, orange, red, all different kinds of hues and such. However, it's, it's still pretty cool for what you're getting. You're getting anywhere from blue to red, anywhere in between those colors, but... Um, so that's the first thing. And not only do these little buttons here change the colors, M1, M2, and M3, they also change what these G keys do, these function keys. They call them G, T, G keys. Um, but they're basically, they're macro keys. And basically, if you set it, uh, I could show you how to do that in a minute, but basically you hit this little recording button up here. It says MR, and then, yeah, that's glowing, and then you hit any G key you want. So you hit G12 and you'll notice it starts to blink. And then let's say I did Control Z. Hit that and then you just hit MR again. So from then on, I've recorded this G12 key to do G, or do, sorry, Control Z. So that's what it does. And so you can, I don't know how many keys you can go up to on one G key, maybe all of them if you wanted, but they're macro keys and you can do it for each one. And each time you hit M2 and M3, or the other buttons anyway, it's a different combination. So this G12 would no longer be Control Z because I'm on M2. If I went back to M1, then yeah, that's Control Z. But now it's not anything. That's not anything. So you have 12 G keys here, and then it goes in times three different modes. So that's 36 different uh, function keys you can have here, or let's call them macro macro keys, and not function keys. These are function keys. 36 different macro keys. That's pretty amazing. I don't use them that much. I I haven't set them to anything really I haven't used them really but I know they are handy for people who are into that I, I should probably get around to that sometime but anywho that's just one function so you have a lot of combinations here and of course also change the colors it's nice this is a little switch here it's what they call like gaming mode I guess there's a little picture of a controller on there you see it turns on it's, sim it's very simple all that does is it does not allow you to hit the start buttons or when you hit the start buttons it doesn't do anything it disables them I think there's another button to disable. I don't even remember. But if you're in a game or something, you don't accidentally like slip and hit the little start button and minimize your game or whatever. That's kind of the point of it. But not really a big deal, but it's kind of cool to have. Um, and then you can plug in headphones in this little port right here. And then a microphone in this port. In this case, it's a headset that has both of those. So you can use your headset through the keyboard. That's actually really handy. And then with this button here, you can mute your headphones. So if you don't want to hear it for whatever, and then you can also mute your, mute your microphone. This one's the blinking red, that means they're muted, and you can do them individually or both. So that's really handy. And then there's a little USB port here. I think it's USB 2.0 or whatever. Yeah, because the keyboard's USB 2.0, so obviously it's USB 2.0. That's really handy. I like having that. Um, but yeah, just showing you around there. There's also, you can also just turn the LEDs off right here. So that's handy if you're, for whatever reason, you just don't want to have them on. And I love having backlit LED um, keys because in the dark, you can see your keys better. And also it's cool. But anyway, and then you get your standard scroll lock, caps lock, thumb lock, whatever. With the orange light up there. And then this I find especially handy. This mutes your whole computer, your settings. And then this also is volume adjustment right here. 
for your computer's volume. That's also handy sometimes. I don't use them that much. I use this a lot more though, the play, stop, and you know, before and after buttons. With iTunes or Windows Media Player or VLC Media Player, whatever video player or YouTube, whatever you're using, you can use those keys to pause it and skip, go ahead. Especially in iTunes, I find it especially handy. You don't have to have the video, um, you don't have to have iTunes open. You can have it minimized and then it will still work. You can pause the song or you can just skip other songs. I find that especially handy when I'm doing work or anything really. That's I like that. Um, but yeah, that's all I can really say about the keyboard. Um, oh wait, no, there's a little bit more. Uh, you have your standard, you know, little like pegs here that just switch spring loaded swing right here. So you can just let it sit on the rubber pegs like that. Kind of slips a little bit though without it because there's only, let's see, there's no rubber pegs on this side. Only on this side there are the rubber which prevents it from moving, but on the bottom there aren't. There's the little plastic bits. So it kind of slides around a little bit. I don't like that. But it doesn't slide as much when you have well, it switches out. So. Well, actually, it still kind of does. Not really a big deal, though. Um, but yeah, I prefer to have these little pegs up. There's also some cable management back here. I don't find that very useful, but you can clearly see there's a little line here, and then it stretches all across to there, to there, and then it goes into here. And then you have a whole assortment of what you can do with your cables and what spots you want them to poke out of and such. I don't find that particularly useful. It only works with like thicker cables. Pretty much the size right here, that's what it works with. But with most other cables, I notice it doesn't work with, with my headset. They have kind of a flat cable. It doesn't work with that. It doesn't even work with my Logitech mouse, which I would assume it should work, but it doesn't. Not that I really care that much. It is useful to have if you're into that kind of thing. So that's something to think about. Um, I think that's pretty much it. It also comes with like a black plastic shield looking thing that you can clip onto right here. I don't find that really useful, but you can, you know, rest your wrists on there. So if that's how you want to use your keyboard, if that's more comfortable to you, you can definitely use that. It comes with it. Comes with it. Um, and that's basically it. I like this keyboard. It's fairly simple. It's not like a super amount of functions here or anything, but it's it's got all the basics and a little bit more. The Macro keys, especially, I think a lot of people would like that. I don't really care that much. I don't really use them, but that is very handy to have them. I like the little gaming mode switch here. I like plugging my headphones and microphone into that. Um, the USB port's obviously handy. And then I like these, you know, the play button, next forward, whatever. It's especially handy. And the keys feel okay. Whatever. They're not the best feeling keys I've ever felt. Some are, like, nice and crisp feeling. These are just kind of almost kind of mushy in a way, I don't know, they're not, they're not that great, <laughs> it, it's not, they're not bad, but I've, I think I've felt better keys before, but it's not mechanical, who cares, um, but yeah, that's basically it, that is the Logitech G110, it's an outstanding keyboard for pretty much any use you want, it's meant to be a gaming keyboard, it's just not mechanical, um, but I've used this thing for years, and I, I don't really care that much, it's, it works just fine for me, I've never really had a problem where a key wasn't pressing, or it felt wrong to me, or whatever, Mechanical keyboards just have more of a distinct feeling when you hit the keys. Rubber dome, regular keyboards are just, you know, whatever. But that's basically it. That is the Logitech G110. Outstanding keyboard for the price.